Welcome to SACSIS, the South African Civil Society Information Service. I'm Fazila Farouk in Johannesburg. Yesterday, South Africa's Finance Minister, Praveen Gordon, delivered the 2012 budget speech. One of the highlights of the speech was notable budget, budgetary support for the Infrastructure Development Program, now much talked about since it emanated from President Jacob Zuma's State of the Nation address two weeks ago. The Zuma administration is seeing this infrastructure development program as the answer to South Africa's unemployment crisis. With us in the studio today is Siraj Mohammed, an economist from Wits University. Siraj is the director of the Corporate Strategy and Industrial Development Research Program in the School of Economic and Business Sciences at Wits University. Welcome to SACSIS, Siraj. Thank you. Siraj, um, uh, Part of your work actually does focus on industrial development, given where you're located at Wits University. Uh, can you tell us, uh, what's your assessment um, of this focus on infrastructure development for job creation? And what do you think of the priority areas within infrastructure development that was outlined in the budget speech yesterday? I think we do need to spend on infrastructure. The question is, are we spending enough and are we spending in the right areas? Um, within the budget speech, the, the minister did mention sort of support for the new growth path and um, in the industrial policy. But with, within the sort of history of the South African economy since 94, I mean, I think we need to look at how much is being spent and what's being spent in the context of the, the fact that from, especially in 96 with gear, uh, there, was, there was a choice made to, to keep the deficit low and to not invest in infrastructure. At the same time, government wasn't interested in thinking about industrial policy seriously and, and restructuring the economy. And so they kept supporting the heavy energy users, for instance. They, they didn't invest in public transport but they, 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 they kept subsidizing pu private um, public transport and, and left people dependent on the taxi industry. And so we have huge backlogs in, in that kind of infrastructure and, and we sort of had subsidized a big business, especially the big users of electricity and uh, the middle class and private pub uh, car users and now we, s we sort of reached the point where we're sitting with a huge backlog, uh, problems with electricity capacity, potholes in the roads, traffic lights that aren't working, and, and it's being sold to us as if this is a new developmental economic plan. And we really need to question that, and, and I think what, what the economics ministers, including Minister of Finance, have to do is to show us, you know, how they're going to increase the spending and how this is actually going to address issues of unemployment, poverty and equality. Some of the reaction that I've been seeing in relation to the, the speech yesterday um, is um, encouraging remarks about the deficit spending being kept low. Um, what's your reaction to that? Uh, is it necessarily a good thing? I think there's, there's room to increase the deficit and, and within this, with this budget and Minister Gordon is saying we're shifting from consumption spending to spending on infrastructure and things that's going to support growth. And, and I think he's on the right track. The issue is what you're spending money on. And then if you are spending money on the correct things and building the right kind of infrastructure, I think there's, there's room to increase the, the deficit more. And, and in a developing country like South Africa, I think you see the creation of debt if you're spending on the right kind of things as an investment in future development and dealing with eradicating poverty and equality and providing jobs. Um, and and uh, within that kind of plan, you need to make sure that you know, you're spending money on poor people in rural areas, making sure that they actually have decent education, public transport, housing, uh, those kind of support services. Um, and you know, a, a, a lot of what they say they're spending money on the budget is on, on uh, social spending, and they're saying they're increasing the the social wage or the the wage, uh, you know, the amount government provides to that. But 
one's not getting a sense that they, they, there's an integrated planning to think about how spending money on the people in South Africa who need money being spent on is, is part of a, a larger development and growth plan um, and linked to things like infrastructure spending and, and spending on uh, industrial policy and other economic policies. So wh what we're not seeing is sort of government coming out with sort of a grand narrative. So they're saying, you know, these are big plans. And so it's easy in, you know, p uh, every year budget's presented and it's presented to us as if it's this big progress and we're spending more on health, we're spending more on education, but it's, so it's decontextualized. And every year we sort of come back and we say, well, we're actually seeing inequality get worse or, you know, not improving. We're seeing, we aren't seeing enough jobs being created. And so even with the medium term expenditure framework, there isn't that kind of broader plan being presented to the South African public and we're not debating it as well. Yet at the same time, um, some of the mainstream commentary also has been that, well, we're kind of reaching the limit when it comes to redistribution. You know, this particular budget, people have said it's a, it's a good balancing act in, in a difficult situation, um, but it seems like it's just tinkering on the fringes of reform again. What, what would you suggest are uh, good levers, you know, that could be pulled in the economy to deal with the the long-standing and very deep systemic uh, inequality in South Africa. And to start with the issue of, you know, we're reaching the limit of social spending and, you know, 16 million or so people are dependent on social grants and there's a, a small tax base or, you know, the number of people contributing taxes is small. You know, to some extent that obfuscates the fact that, you know, government over the past since, and if you just look at since 94, has actually provided huge benefits to big business, the heavy people who use the roads and the energy system intensively, have been basically subsidized with money spent previously on infrastructure. They haven't paid the full amounts for it. In addition to that, you know, middle class and rich people get all the benefits of you know, tax breaks on pension funds and all those things. And, and those numbers are never added up. And in terms of thinking of, you know, what support and incentives does government give to, to the rich rather than the poor? And I think if you added up all those things, you'd find that, that actually, you know, this small percentage of rich people probably have more benefits than poor people. And so I think we need to contextualize the discussion about what's being spent on uh, social spending within that framework. And then, I mean, you can also compare to what to, you know, rich people spend on petrol for the SUVs every year, you know, the, uh, those kind of issues. And think about, you know, are, are we actually um, being fair about distribution and, and social spending and what, what's being handed, uh, what's being given? Because being rich in South Africa means a huge amount of benefits and living off, you know, past investments, past mineral wealth, and, and not having adequately paid royalty taxes and others. I mean, this budget's also talking about um, uh, uh, um, capital gains taxes or, or changing that. But, um, and they're looking at now putting a tax on, on derivatives, which they should have done a long time ago. So a huge amount of the wealth being generated in the country is not being adequately taxed. And, and if you look at the growth of the financial sector, the taxation system hasn't kept up with that. And so, you know, and then manual reduced taxes from 94 on companies and individuals. And so, you know, we, we, we're talking about things as if we're reaching a limit and, you know, they can't, we can't deal with all these poor people anymore. And some of the comments I've seen on, that you get under the stories in the paper about the budget, one person saying, well, you know, it's just, black people are just breeding too much. You know, there's that kind of racist reaction to that. Mm -hmm. And we really have to be careful about those kind of things and actually look at who's really benefiting in the South African economy. And you know, it's really nice to be a, a middle class white man in this economy. You get huge amounts of benefits and you, your life is easy most of the time. Um, and you, what they're doing is they're not investing their money back in South Africa. They're taking their money abroad, speculating financial markets and who, and basically that's why government's saying we need to increase public infrastructure investment. Um, 
it's because pri the private sector isn't coming to the party and they haven't been for the last, um, since the crisis and even slightly before that. You know, so, so, uh, so you know, when you talk about levers, I mean, I think you need to go back and look at the distribution of wealth and who actually is benefiting from what's happening in South Africa, who's actually been living off a legacy of huge inf uh, infrastructure investment in electricity and roads and stuff during the apartheid era that wasn't maintained properly during the, the post-94 period. And then and look at the fact that there have been huge subsidies to a large part of the population. And, and so I think this is the context in which we need to do our fiscal policy and fiscal planning as well. I mean, we're also in a situation where you have to keep you know, the economy running the way it is while you're trying to restructure it. Um, but, I mean, with, and with that, we really need to say, well, you know, how, and there needs to be a public debate, you know, what should the aluminum smelters pay for electricity? Um, you know, what, what is a decent toll on people using the roads uh, who aren't using public transport and those kinds of issues as well? Okay, well, thank you very much. And thank you for joining us at Saxes. <laughs>